Um, if you would, Patrick, just give, give us a kind of overview of your work, what you do, um, how you do it, and what the results are, just very briefly. So very briefly, what we are doing with my team of Yarad in Unum, with an association called Yarad, together in Hebrew, and in Unum, together in Latin. Uh, we are looking for all the mass graves of the Jews killed in Ukraine and now in Belarus, and I hope in next January we we'll begin in Russia. We found already 850 extermination sites and the interview with 823 witnesses who were present at the execution. What we discovered, so you must understand that it began the 22 of June of 41 and it ended at the end of the war in 44. And these killings were done by killing units, but also by Wehrmacht, gendarmes, polizai, and also by Ukrainian polizai sometimes, were passing from village to village to shoot the people, telling them that they bring them to Palestine, that in fact they were bringing them to a mass grave was at the end of the street. So, you mentioned that you've discovered 850 sites. How, how do you do that? What, what, what's your method? First, we work with archives, Soviet archives that we found in Washington, in the Holocaust Museum of Washington, 16 million of pages. And there is a file for each village, a small trial that they did in 44. Until now, where everybody was thinking these archives were propaganda of the Soviet Union. In fact, this archive was saying the truth. On the other side, we work with German archives from the justice, who put on trial people who were accused to participate in the killing. We concentrate this archive in Paris, we translate them from German and from Russian to French, and we classify them by village. And after my team, nine persons arrive in the village. And the first old lady that we see, my translator, who is an Ukrainian woman, goes outside of the van and says very slowly, you were here during the war? And she says yes, to say, oh, surely you can help us. Because we are looking for what did the fascist, and also we are looking where the shooting of the Jews. And sooner or later, she brings us to the house of somebody who was present at the execution, because we discovered that the Nazi used children for every killing minimum 150 ch Ukrainian children to carry the Jews from the village to the mass grave, to dig the mass grave, to take the gold teeth from the Jews before they're being shot, to fulfill the grave after the shooting and people are not dead, etc. And these people, they want to speak before to die. So you, you, your team actually identifies and locates individuals who were witnesses yeah. to this as children. What, what, how old were they when they were witnesses? Sometime, I remember a, a woman, her name is Olga, she is living in the north of Crimea, and she told me, they pass in the morning, and they, take, they told me, come with your spade. So she told me, I run to see my mother, and my mother told me, if you don't go, they will kill you. And in fact, they forced 14 Ukrainian girls to go on the corpse after every shooting. They were shooting Jews, these girls were walking on the corpse to make the corpse flat, and going outside of the grave, and so on. And she told me I did that from 10 in the morning until 4 a.m. And suddenly I saw, she told me, all the classroom of the Jewish girls of my class. And she, she, told, she stopped to speak, and after she said, and I had to walk on their corpse like the others. So, and it was the first time she spoke. She spoke in front of her whole family. She's now 78. It's why we are running, because witnesses are very old. And if we don't reach these people, we'll never know where are the corpse, what are the evidence, and these people will never be buried as human beings, will never receive a Kaddish, a prayer, and also without evidence, you know, that we open the gates to all the deniers. I want to talk in a few minutes about the whole concept of the bystander, people who witness these crimes, and the impact that their witnessing had on them. But I want to go back to, to uh, the actual process that you're engaged in. Now, you enter a village, people don't know where the mass graves are, they don't talk about it, they haven't spoken about it. In many villages there is nothing. In many villages, people, only these people they remember, because they were at the execution. So, sometimes, as I told you, we find this lady. Sometimes we go to see the priest, Greco-Catholic, Orthodox, Catholic, he calls in the parish, he says, whoever was present at the execution, you wait on the right, and the priest will make an interview. And people wait and accept to give an interview. However, we pass through the mayor of the village or through the shop, the main shop center, and people accept to speak very easily. And with the witness, we reveal the crime. 
It shows that, as you say, before we were thinking that the execution was the Nazi, the collaborator, and the victims. That we are never, never thinking we present perhaps 100, 200, 300 children required and forced to be here. We can call them bystander. In French, we have not the same term, so we have no name to call them. We say the requisition and people, because they are required to do it, I would say by force. So, um... Let's go back a little bit. You, you started this when? When did you start this work? Well, I started, in fact, by myself. In the beginning, it was a private story. My grandfather has been deported as military in Ukraine in 42, in July 42, in a camp, a, a German camp of Soviet prisoners in Ravaroska, and after in Lvov, and after in Stritch. And he came back alive, and when I was a child, he always told me, for us, the French, it was awful. But outside the camp, it was worse. And me, I didn't understand what was outside. And I understood only when I was 35 years old, I was in Poland, I lost my road, and suddenly I asked, where are we? And somebody told me, near to Ravaroska. And in my brain, my vocation, the Jews, my great father, Holocaust, it made one. I studied Holocaust in Yad Vashem many years, and after I decided to go on the ground in Poland, in Ukraine. And it's because of the mayor of Ravaroska, who brought me outside of the village, in a small hamlet where he met 100 farmers who were present at the execution. He put them around the mass grave, and the first one told me, yeah, I was with my mom, I was keeping a cow, and suddenly I saw a German turning and turning with his bicycle, and he went. And in fact, he was choosing where to dig the grave. And the day after, three German arrived with 30 Jews in a truck. They forced them to dig the grave eight meters deep. And after, during the, the digging, they asked to listen to music, German music with a gramophone. Was, one was playing harmonica. For lunch, they asked to kill two chickens and to grill them because they were afraid to be poisoned by the village. So you see, these people, they saw everything, the daily life of the killers and the victims. And he said in the afternoon, he said to the Jews, now you are, you are very tired. He asked them to go outside of the mass grave. He went down and he put explosive under the soil. And after he said to the Jews, now you can go on. And all of them exploded. And after a woman arrived, she told me, the journal, they called me my farm. I was a child, a girl. And they asked me to climb in the trees, to take the pieces of corpse, and to bury them behind the branches. And after trucks and trucks and trucks of Jews arrived until the night, and in this village, a small village called Borove, they killed 1,500 Jews. It was the last Jews of Ravaroska. And the mass grave took three days to die, like everywhere, because in fact Jews have pushed when they are hurted, because they, they settled the law at the beginning of the war in July 41, one bullet, one Jew, one Jew, one bullet. And this same evening, the mayor told me, what I, what I did, Patrick, with you, I can do for 100 village. And finally, I decided to make 100 village. We decided to build this association, Yara Dinunum, to have a team of six persons in Paris, now full-time. And never I would have thought to make all Ukraine. And until now, we covered 50% of the territory of Ukraine, half in West, half in East. I think a lot of people in the audience are, are 